morning everybody i trust that you are well i trust that you are getting into your morning routine we read in mark 135 uh, how jesus got up early in the morning and he went to an isolated place to pray and it is so important that even while the whole world is still sleeping to get up early in the morning to prepare yourself to practice to get ready for the day and if you are struggling i have struggled with this in the past as well and I realized that God is not an add on to my life, but He is my life. And also when I realized that He is the foundation and also the balance, because many times we say, oh, I need balance in my life. And then I realized God is the balance in my life. And now, therefore, in the morning, I start with God and get my day ready so that my point of departure can be redemption and love and love. The love of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and not guilt and condemnation and shame. So when we walk out of that door, then we know that we are not being reactive, but we know that God is in control of our lives. We know that our heart, our mind, our spirit, our character is right for the day because we got with God. So we read so far Matthew 6 verse 9 and 10 we te jesus teaches us how to pray very powerful this is the prayer of jesus and he says in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven and then it says now for today verse 11 give us this day our daily bread as you can notice this is not a weekly or a monthly prayer. He says, give us this day. So this is a prayer that we pray every morning, knowing that we start our day with God. Otherwise, we are actually saying, no, it's fine. Uh, you know, God, I can do this on my own. I'll do this in my own power. So in Matthew 6 verse 31 in the New Living Translation, it says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. What is dominating your thoughts right now? Because what is dominating your thoughts, it will lead to action and it will either lead to your success or to your failure. He says, but your heavenly father already knows what uh, all your needs are. Verse 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today today's trouble is enough for today so what do we need to do we need to conquer today and we can only conquer today when we get to God. See, how can you conquer tomorrow if you haven't even conquered today yet? And the way that you end your day with that conquer, that victory that you end, will determine how you start your next day. So therefore, when tomorrow becomes today, then we can ask God again, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. So I want to share four points with you today. When we pray this, part of the prayer of give me this day my daily bread and the first part is that it is important for us to remain in the will of god four points on that one point is first of all we must be in a daily prayer and devotion unto the lord jesus christ we must call upon god trust the holy spirit who empowers us with ability with efficiency for that day to fulfill the mandate of god in our lives this is the first point the second point is that we also need to have fellowship with one another. There is no such thing as I can do Christianity on my own or this or Christianity is a private thing. It's a thing between me and God. No. Hebrews 10 verse 24 to 25 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So that's important, fellowship. And then being diligent and balanced in your work ethics and your word habits. In 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11 and 12, Paul comes and he says, make sure that you live a quiet life, 
minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before, then people who are not believers will respect the way you live and you will not need to depend on others. So diligence and duty must be in balance with devotion. You know when people get fearful, when they're worried, when people have an identity crisis, what happens? They tend to overwork. As if the work becomes their identity or their stress. If they don't work, they won't have this or this or that. But we have to realize today that God the Father is our provision. Regardless of where you find yourself at. God is our balance. And then the fourth point of remaining in the will of God is obedience in giving. Balakai 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. And it is amazing how many times people ask God and they don't understand. They come at a crossroad of their life where there's no finances, where they're struggling. But they have never put seed in the ground. No harvest has come up. So it's important to be faithful, to remain in the will of God in these four areas. So first of all, when you pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, make sure you are in the will of God. Secondly, we need to believe that it is God's will to prosper us. You cannot be at a place where you have a poverty mentality, but now still uh, you want to receive God's best. You're going to remain in that poverty mentality. You can't be doubtful. You've got to be certain. You've got to have faith in the fact that God wants to prosper you. Philippians 4 verse 19 promises, But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. John believes that God's will for his people is to prosper in uh, 3 John 2. And then in Mark 10 verse 9, 29 and 30, it pledges a hundredfold return to those who make sacrifices for the sake of the kingdom of God. So you've got to believe it's God's will to prosper you. Number three, be specific in your request. Philippians 4 verse 6 and 7 says, be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Where is the attack on our lives? It's in our hearts. It's on our minds. Many people are losing heart in these days. Many people are going out of their minds. Therefore, we need our foundation to be right. We need to start our day right. So, Lord, I'm bringing my specific request to you today. No matter what it is, I'm naming it, I'm writing it down, and I know that you will provide in every need according to the riches of your glory as long as I remain in the will of the Father. And I know that it is your will to prosper me. And then lastly, be tenacious. You know, my daughter is a great example. She will stop at nothing to get what she wants. She will pull out every means to get what she wants to get at a specific moment. In Luke 18 verse 1 to 8, Jesus related to the parable of the unjust uh, judge and the widow who repeatedly begged him and asked, Avenge me of mine adversary. And because of this woman's tenacity, keep, keeping on begging and asking what happened is, he granted her her request. And now in Luke 18 verse 7, it says, And shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? It takes tenacity to recover what Satan has stolen from you. Proverbs 6 verse 13 and 31 says that once he, the thief is discovered, he must return sevenfold. John 10.10 10 says a thief came only to steal, kill and destroy. But God came, came to give you life and give it abundantly. 
John said in uh, 1 John 3 verse 8 that this is the purpose of the Son of God, why he was manifested, that he might destroy the work of the enemy. And we see in Joel 2 verse 25, God promised to restore you the years that the locust has eaten. But then you've got to walk in these principles when we ask, Lord, give us this day, our daily bread. We've got to understand and make sure that we are residing in the will of God to love God, to love people. Love God by loving people and love people by empowering their lives. And then the next is believe that God wants to prosper you. And then make specific requests. And then lastly, be tenacious. Don't stop until it is answered. Many children are saved today because their parents never kept, stopped praying for them. I'm one of them. Uh, I know of people that has experienced such great miracles in their lives. A lady that was married with a person for 36 years that was addicted to, to alcohol and God delivered him because she never stopped praying. So just where you are at the moment, let us just pray together and ask our God this day to provide our daily need and our daily bread. Are you ready? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, I acknowledge today that you are our sustainer, you are our provider. Thank you that we can come to the throne of grace in our time of need, knowing that we will find grace and mercy. Abba Father, I trust you for, uh, we trust you today for our daily provision and that which you know that we need. Thank you, Lord, for food, for clothing, for shelter, all things that are needful for our soul, our body. And not just the perishable things, but we thank you, Lord, that you provide in our lives for the eternal things today. Thank you, Lord, that you have already supplied everything that we need. And today, by faith and through prayer and with thanksgiving, we come to apply it within our lives. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom in every situation. We thank you today you give our daily breakthrough, giving us your strength, our health. Thank you that you give us health, our finances, in the restoration of our lives. Thank you that you give us this day support, this day open doors, this day divine appointments, this day rest and faith, the grace, the mercy, the love, the purpose, the peace, the joy, everything I need that has been accomplished through Jesus on the cross. We thank you for this. Lord, thank you that you give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we are praying for those that are watching that don't have work. Lord, that are in uncertain circumstances. We, Lord, we pray that today they will conquer today. And that, Father, you will provide today in everything that they need. In food on the table and, and a roof over their head. And joy in their house and provision in their lives according to the riches of your glory and we thank you today knowing that we don't have to go out in our own power and struggle but thank you lord today that we can start this day in the name and in the power of jesus from the point of departure that we have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb thank you lord that this day is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in this day in the mighty name of jesus our god amen and amen Amen. God bless you. No more